What is up? I'm Moana Turtle, and we have another episode of Pokemart. Pokemart sounds weird, but where we go over the Pokemon TCG marketplace, uh, how things are holding up on the secondary market, and stuff like that. Obviously, <clears throat> the biggest topic right now is Hidden Fates and how that's doing, but we're going to start off with something a little bit different. We are going all the way back to 1999. That's right, we're going to base set where it all began. Um, you know, while all this hype and everyone's looking and people potentially are paying way over for Hidden Fates stuff, you know, like, in my opinion, base set stuff, you know, grab one up, grab a piece of history and you know a card that's like 20 years old um i think they're probably more affordable than some people think so if you don't already have a base set collection like i feel like this is kind of like geared towards you um i think it's probably uh more you know accessible than you might think for something that is old as that is so let's go to our first site which is going to be pokemonprice.com super useful site I'm guessing what this does is kind of just like scrapes off of eBay listings to give you like historical data and that is awesome. So we are looking at 99.9 base set cards. We're going to be focusing on the unlimited um, PSA 9. So I dropped, dropped it down to 10. 10 does get kind of expensive. We're going to focus on the 9. I feel like it's still good enough to have, you know, that's a good collection and I think it's well within uh, or it's cheap. Uh, uh, cheap is kind of subjective. But, um, you know, it's, I bet it's cheaper than most people think. So we're going to look at, there's no good way to, oh, wait a minute, let's see, unlimited. Oh, this site is awesome. All right, so we're going to focus on this and we're going to look at some of the uh, eBay stuff as well. So I think I picked up my PSA 9 set maybe like a year or two ago and I felt like, all right, yeah, the Charizard was a little bit expensive or much more expensive than the rest of it. Most of the cards I picked up for like, less than $30. I think the Blastoise was like 75, the Venusaur was maybe like, I don't know, 50, 60, 70, or something like that. I think the Alexam was a little bit more. But let's take a look at what this thing says. So uh, this is kind of like last sale. Let's go into the Blastoise one. I feel like this is actually kind of high. Actually, this is what I have, uh, Blastoise. So I did filter out just the PSA 9s. And yeah, so, oh gosh, 2016. <laughs> Pick these up for $40, that's insane. And then prices have kind of uh, gone up uh, 2017. All right, let's go into 2019. Yeah, $50, you know, if if you lucky, you can get it, um, you know, definitely under 100. Uh, at this point, actually, they're starting to get over 100 pretty consistently, which I'm kind of surprised at. So the prices do seem to have gone up, but uh, you know, I feel like if you keep an eye out, you can get them for less than 80. And again, like guys, these are from 1999. You know, it's almost 2020. Uh, this is this this is Pokemon TCG history. Uh, so when it comes to like, oh, you know, should I overpay for ETBs? Like, oh my gosh, why not pick up this Blastoise instead? Uh, I pulled up the Chansey one. Chansey's surprisingly cheap. What the? This this can't be real. 13. Wonder if like the seller flaked. Uh, but I feel like a lot of these are under $30. If we go back to this, this just shows like the last one. Mewtwo for less than $25. Nino King 40, that's surprisingly high. Ninetales 20? Oh my gosh. Uh, Raichu, yeah, I guess that one will always be a little expensive. Right, Z uh, Zapdos surprisingly low for a legendary bird. Venusaur, yeah, it's, for starters, it'll always be a little bit higher. And guys, there's only 16 of these foils. You know, it's not like today where it's like, Get all the foils, get all the GX, get all the full art, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, there's only 16 of them. And yes, the Charizard one will cost significantly more. Uh, let's take a look at that one, actually. Last sale was about 200. I think when I picked up uh, the ones I do have, it was about like 150 at the time. All right, I'm not sure if we can zoom in. But, all right, it looks like they're hovering. You know, you could probably get one. Uh, I would say you'd be fortunate to find one for 150. Looks like a lot of them are getting more close to that $200 mark. So, you know, like maybe Charizard one, you do have to be patient about. Uh, I don't know, maybe something will happen when prices go down. One thing I will say is, you know, with all the hype with the Hidden Fates Charizard, I find that there's just like a, I don't know, like a, what's the word when, when sound like kind of like amplifies each other. It's like resonating effects where 
all right, well, the hidden fee charges are sold for $10,000. Like, all right, all the Charizards will go up a little bit because people are like, oh, well, what all the Charizards can't pick up? I can't afford that one. Give me that base set one or whatever it happens to be. Um, and maybe that's kind of like what hap what kind of causing this most, eh, no, actually, that's from a while ago. But uh, anyway, you know, I do think if you're a patient, you could eventually find this for under 200 and that's going to be by far the most expensive card. All right, let's go into more current stuff. Uh, the hidden fate situation, like, oh, where can I buy it online? Like, you know, GameStop, I think people have told me you can't even pre-order the ETBs anymore. I'm kind of disappointed. I wish I did that. Um, but you can do, like, for the Pokeball collections. But everything at that point is MSRP. As far as other sites, you know, definitely just subscribe to this Pokemon TCG deals. Uh, you know, all right, it goes up by Target. But then this stuff, like, goes so fast. Um... And there was like this, every once in a while, Costco has something. I wouldn't say it's worth it to buy a Costco membership, but you know, this is a pretty good deal. You get these three kind of like randomish tins, not random, but you know, there's nothing, nothing new in them. But for 10 bucks each, I think each one has like four packs. Yeah, that's, you know, it's uh, maybe it's a cool gift or if you just want to do some random openings for on the cheap, it's pretty cool. Again, only if you have like a, uh, the Costco membership already. eBay 10% if you can just check check out this link see if you can get it. 10% um, back that's that's awesome. Maybe make a potentially getting one of these uh, $500 Charizards worth it but I'm not sure. I'm still on the fence about that. 40% uh, of Barnes and Noble but I think you have to go into the store. All right Hidden Fates let's look at this. There is a single, at the time we're recording, a single one for $500, but it's a new seller, so that's always a little, not sketch, but a little, maybe unnecessarily risky. Cynthia, all right, so, kind of, actually, I'm gonna go to this view. Um, you know, there's a lot of people asking, like, all right, what do you think is gonna happen with the secondary market and stuff like that? Uh, people are speculating, like, oh, I feel like I could sell these tins for a lot more. For sealed? I, I, what I see is like the prices continue to go up. People keep saying, you know, I can't find product. Um, all these eBay list things are outrageous prices. Like I think it was like six tins for like two hundred dollars. That's that's absurd. Uh, so maybe sealed product that still might be. I think the singles market is kind of doing what I was expecting. Is all the single prices are steady shift down as like more and more stuff hits the market or secondary market like basically people are opening tins at this point it's like that second wave of products so all the prices are going down Charizard is the obvious exception but all right with that in mind um, we'll, we'll come back to the sealed product uh, Cynthia on TCG player 86 uh, Tapu Le oh man when this curse came out this thing was at like a hundred I feel this thing dropped it's like half its value and, and that's what I was talking about um, I feel like that's only going to continue and then it's kind of like, you know, the whole sealed product thing. It's almost like, oh, you can play the lottery, you know, um, especially if you have to pay extra to try to get that Charizard, potentially that $10,000 BGS 10 pristine. Uh, but otherwise, no matter what you pull, like if you spend, I don't know, absurd $80 on a ETB and you get a gold card, which is awesome, you know, by now, by that point, maybe the price is down to like 40, 30 or something like that. So the singles market, everything is on the downtrend. Let's take a look. Mewtwo, you can get, <laughs> these are all sold less things for so 45. This was probably like 50 something. So it looks like Mewtwo is probably like 40 something at this point, which is at this point, like getting pretty, I definitely want to complete a master set and I'm not sure, maybe I'll give it time to when the ETBs come out before I just pick up the rest of the singles that I need, uh, just because I feel like that's when maybe the price would bottom out. After the ETBs, uh, you know, I feel like that's the biggest wave of substantial stuff. From there, it's like all those premium collection stuff, which is kind of more, kind of expensive just to begin with. Lele's uh, looks like they're starting to go 70s, 60s, but then every once in a while you can get it for under that. So that's pretty good for those gold cards. Shrine of Punishment. I feel like this is a good one. Uh, Lele is such a like a maybe like a historic one but at the end of the day it's not it's not in standard rotation more trying to punishment it's gonna be here for a little bit a little bit longer and you get it for 30 bucks that's pretty good well sorry all right let's move to the most important one charizard is this all right this is current listing so obviously this is very point in time and things will move super fast in fact if, if one popped up for like 200 i'd probably pick it up right now just see what that 10 percent ebay bucks 
but if you want to buy one this second 600 575 so yeah over 500 dollars i don't understand this oh man when like thing first came out and like pre-orders for like for 300 that was like that's crazy like this has to go down and it almost doubled this is uh, here we go the sold listings. So a BGS 9.5 for $750 Although I did look at this so I looked into this um, one and it was sold for 1500 and I think the buyer like didn't pay or something so it got relisted for 750 uh, Maybe that's not bad and then a bunch of ones for just under 500 I feel like 500 at this point like if you put it 500 or close to it It's like it's just gonna be absorbed instantly and uh, it's still mind-boggling. Oh man, it's so crazy. So yeah, these prices are holding over 500, getting close to 600. Uh, BGS 9.5, about like 700, 800 dollars. Uh, let's just take a quick look at. So, um, you know, when it comes to pre-orders, I don't think it's that important. Like hidden fates is so hyped you know th to the next time we see this i'm not sure if we, it wouldn't shock me if we never saw this amount of like demand again uh but you know at maybe the less the potential lesson there is, is if you're concerned if you think there's going to be hype and i feel like I know, i've been talking for as as soon as there was speculation about hidden fates or shiny ultra shiny gx coming to english like i was like oh gosh i'm going you know i'm gonna get a lot of stuff and i feel like this is the big one uh whenever you feel like that and when you're confident about it, just pre-order it you know game nerds wherever ebay uh whatever site um you do save money and then you don't have to try to compete for uh the the sealed product on like ebay for outrageous prices for stuff that's on pre-order right now so they still have all this stuff you know i feel like it's only it's obviously worth it if you're gonna get it anyway save a little bit of money um for it running out, I kind of doubt it. Uh, one thing I didn't want to bubble up. So if you haven't checked out a Discord, check it out. There's a link down below and there's a Luo kind of like point out. I just posted like, hey guys, you know, you can pre-order this if you want. Uh, I wasn't too crazy about the products. And then someone pointed out like, oh man, did you check out that UFO? <laughs> Look at this. What is that thing? <laughs> like, I feel like this art came out of nowhere. It reminds me of like a, the Rick and Morty cartoon. <laughs> Like, if they traveled to some Pokemon world, it wouldn't surprise me if they drew it like that. Um, but yeah, uh, obviously Game Nerds is where I pre-order a lot of my stuff. I think I just did like, oh, that because it, check if you can get that eBay deal. I just ordered like the whatever I'm going to get for Cosmic Eclipse. Um, and hey, I got 10% off. It was even cheaper than, cheaper than Game Nerds. So uh, definitely check out if you can apply for that eBay bucks deal. Definitely worth it. So, Hidden Fates. Yeah, so the sealed sealed stuff I, I see people's points people have been you know speculating like oh you know I, i'm going to keep most of it sealed most of my stuff sealed uh so i can sell it on ebay or something you know what uh i i thought that the tins were going to be all right now everyone can get it that doesn't appear to be the case so definitely sealed is definitely the way to go it seems like the secondary single market it's charizard or bust so once you open it um you either got a 600 dollars card or at best you know you got a couple um, you know, fifty dollar cards or something like that. So the the swings are huge. Uh, so obviously there is selling the sealed stuff on the secondary market. Obviously can you know can go an, in a profitable margin. Anyway, guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below. And um, yeah, what else do you want to hear about? A couple of people mis listed some of the older stuff. I'm happy to talk about whatever. I'm not. I don't pretend to be an expert in any of them, but we're happy to kind of go through what the historical prices have been and what the trends are try to draw some connections to what we see going on and stuff like that so let me know what your thoughts are down below guys thanks for watching as always i'm wanna turtle and i'll catch you guys next time